In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about advertising and promotion strategies. Um, once we have our idea, we have our product, we've done a little bit of user testing, we've gained some feedback, we know our value proposition, and we're really ready to get out there and try our first brush at either a B2B or a B2C sale, you know, business to business or a business to consumer sale. Sometimes it's hard to figure out what advertising do we do? You know, there, what is the process for us to really develop our campaigns and how do we know where to focus? Entrepreneurs often begin with the advertising they're familiar with as opposed to the one that works best with their target demographics. Let me explain what I mean by that. So sometimes we're the type of person that, that uses social media a ton and maybe Facebook is really our go-to social media. We use it all the time. It's where we find our friends. That's where you know we communicate with our friends. That's where our family uh, photos are. And, and maybe we're really interested in Facebook. But maybe we develop a product that is, that is geared toward gamers. And we specifically want to sell our product uh, to people that are you know Xbox and PlayStation fans. Maybe Facebook is not the best place to find them. Now, you might be thinking in your mind, well, there's probably social media that has a younger demographic like Instagram or maybe even Twitter. But there are also platforms that are specific to gamers like Twitch where you've got people streaming all day long. You might be way more successful spending all your time and money advertising on a platform like Twitch because you know that's the venue where your consumer's on. So the problem that we have sometimes as founders and entrepreneurs is we focus on what's familiar as opposed to what's right. And so this is really about trying to figure out what is right for our customer. And then there are some considerations about our own money as well. So here's the process that we follow. First of all, we wanna define your channels. We wanna know how we're going to be selling to people. Where are we gonna be distributing our product? How are people gonna encounter our product? And then we wanna profile our users in each channel. Who's going to find us in this channel versus in that channel? And we wanna develop personas and really get deep into wants and needs that we've talked about in previous lectures. We wanna figure out who the customer is, how they're gonna buy, what drives them to buy, and really come up with some strong definitions. And then we research and we test advertising and promotions that connect to those users while they're in what we call a consideration period. Consideration period is the time where we enter into the buying funnel all the way until the conversion. And so typically the buying funnel goes in four steps. It starts with awareness, and then we end up considering, and then we get into intent phase where we start really shopping, and then there ultimately is the decision, the buying process. And this entire funnel, this purchase funnel, is something in marketing that we call consideration period. And it's important to know what is the timing of your consideration period. So uh, if we're talking about buying a stick of gum at a grocery store or a pack of gum, well, we might just go to the register, see gum, and think, oh, yeah, I'm out of gum. I usually have that in my car, and I don't have any. You look around, you purchase one, you're done. So the entire consideration period might be 30 seconds. Well, there's competitive nature in that 30 seconds. There's pricing considerations. There's packaging considerations. There's flavor options. There's a lot of things that happen in that 30 seconds in our brain to decide to grab this one versus that one. Okay, and so there's a lot of strategy in that consideration period. Or you might be doing something very large in your purchase, like I'm gonna buy a new home. And purchasing a new home sometimes can take years for people. Maybe they look and look and look to find the right house in the right market at the right price that they can afford. It could take all kinds of time uh, to go through that process. And it's important to understand that because the way that you market to that consumer is gonna be different based on the channel and based on the consideration period. So what we do is we launch some advertising, we test it, we gather feedback, and then we continue to optimize. Now, this is an expensive process sometimes, especially if you're a founder and you're bootstrapping, you're on a limited budget. So one way to do it is to find experts that already market products let's say that are similar, maybe they're not gonna be the same product as yours because your idea is probably original, but people that already sell to your customer segment and sell a related product or somebody that sells uh, you know, a different kind of product into a similar market, 
we can ask them and we can learn from some of the mistakes that they've made. And then sometimes it's possible to do a joint venture relationship where we actually work together with that company. If they've already spent all the money to gain that customer base and it's the same one that we need, what we can do is go to them and say, hey, promote us to that customer base and then we will share in the profits. What's nice about that is if you make an agreement that you're gonna give them, say, 10% of your gross, well, then you know that you've got a fixed cost in your advertising, which is 10% of the gross that you end up selling. And so this is a way to make sure that you don't overextend yourself, but you're leveraging the good work that somebody else has already done. And here's, here's what that would look like, is that might be you know somebody with an e-commerce store featuring your product on their store, and then you doing a revenue share as they sell your product. Um, it might also be somebody that has an email marketing list and they've already got a relationship with you know thousands of users and then you help prepare an email about your product where they talk about your product hey i talked to this company today it's a product you should all check out maybe you can go buy it at this website and then you split those profits so the joint venture works very well as well well i want to give you guys a roadmap for what a full-fledged digital marketing strategy looks like and so um, this is kind of a, a simplistic view of what an online marketing plan could be. So if you take an online marketing plan and you start to think about what types of traffic, what channels of advertising do we need to work in, before we even get to that, we need to consider, do we have the right website set up? Do we have somewhere where they can actually purchase? Uh, one of the mistakes that a lot of early companies make is they, they very casually put something online and they don't think about are they perceived right in line with another much larger brand. And sometimes it's about content and formatting and not so much spending all the money that it takes to build a really you know, well-built, excellent website. Websites can get very expensive. I mean, websites can be very cheap and they can be very, very expensive. And so you've got to be careful to know how to leverage the right platforms right out the gate. And so if you're selling product to consumers, there's platforms like Shopify and BigCommerce where you can set up very quickly, very easily, use some stock themes. And really it's about adding your photography and your descriptions and customizing your store. Um, if you're doing something more like a service business, you know, there's platforms like WordPress and Drupal where you can create a very simple website very quickly and have the right content out there. Now, obviously, as your website grows and your business grows, you're going to have some strong opinions about how your site might be built. Um, but initially, there's some very inexpensive ways to do it. What's important in considering uh, how you do your website is you want to make sure that you are building a website that looks like the type of company that you're trying to become. So if you're gonna be a shopping company, build a shopping website. If you're going to be a service company, build a service-based website. Make sure that your website emulates who you're trying to be. Um, make sure that you build it and you talk on the website for that target demographic. So who are my customer segments? Who do I want to talk to? If you are selling dermatology, uh, products, but like high-end medical grade dermatology, um, you're going to be talking to a lot of dermatologists. And so the vernacular that you use, the way you build the website should be all tailored to that dermatology crowd. But if you're doing more of a B2C and you have a very general product that could be used by anybody, say something like a cell phone case, and anybody with a cell phone that needs a cell phone case could be a potential candidate, those don't need to be real wordy and don't need to be, you know, you, they don't need to be created with the best, um, you know, highest level of English and highest level of writing. Uh, really, it's more pictorial. It's about, you know, the images of the case. It's about some features. It's very simple and bulleted lists. And so you want to make sure that, again, you tailor your content and your website to that target demographic. And then the last piece that you get ready before you start driving traffic is tracking and analysis. Make sure that you have some way to track who comes to your website, what are they doing when they're there, where did they come from, and so something, a simple platform like Google Analytics, um, there's several other platforms on the market, um, but you need to have some kind of tracking in place. Now, if your entire business revolves around Facebook or Instagram, 
there are metrics and tracking on Facebook and Instagram for uh, you know page admins that can they can use to see who's coming to the website. You might be running a business that uses social and a website and many other venues, and so you might need six or seven tracking platforms. So all something to consider as you're starting your first digital marketing plan. Now, when we talk about digital marketing, I want to talk about five quick channels with you, just things to think about as you're building your plan. And obviously, you know, in other classes, we go a lot deeper into this type of stuff, but this is just meant to be an overview. So organic traffic, this is traffic that comes from a search engine. Somebody goes to a Google or a Bing, they do a search, they find you, not in the advertising, but just organically, and they click and they go to your website. So that's organic traffic. And that traffic tends to be very, very powerful. When people find you organically, they feel like they found it, not that it was pushed upon them. And so the mindset of the user is very different when they come to your website, and it's a much higher converting type of traffic. Similar to that is something called referral traffic. Referral traffic is similar to organic, except for it's not from search engines. It might be some other content site. So maybe I'm reading Forbes magazine online, and I'm reading Forbes.com, and I see an article about a new backpack company who's just killing it, and it's very interesting, interesting to me. So I go to the website from Forbes, I click over to the backpack company through a link. That's called referral traffic. The backpack company would have received a referral from Forbes. Now referral traffic, much like organic, is very high converting, very pure traffic because again, people found you kind of in an organic method. They found you while reading and researching and now they're on your site. It wasn't pushed upon them and so they don't have their kind of trust blinders up. They, they're able to absorb the information a little bit better. And then now we get into more of an advertised channel. So the first one would be paid search. Now this is on the search engine and the promoted ads at the very top of a search engine. And sometimes they're on the side, the bottom, they'll put them in lots of different places as they're experimenting with how the search engine makes revenue. But we as a new business can buy ads on the search engine that are relevant to our business. So when someone comes in, let's say we have a shoe store and someone comes in and types in running shoes, we could show an ad for, hey, we sell running shoes. We're a new company, we offer 20% off and then get somebody to click over. So any click that comes from a paid ad on a search engine is called paid search traffic. The next area is something called display advertising. Now, a lot of people don't know the name display advertising. They think of them more as banner ads. But all of these pop-ups and banners that are all over the internet, and there's no way that you can read articles and do research without seeing a lot of banners because that's how a lot of the content websites monetize their platform. And so almost every time you're reading a news article or some kind of uh, premium content, if you're not paying for that content, usually there's going to be ads down the side, in the middle of the content, maybe at the bottom after the content, trying to lure you into the next thing. And so these banner ads are something that are very effective, banner or display ads. Now, you have to show a lot of them to move the needle, but banner ads can, can really help out a brand. Consumers, for the most part, don't love banner ads. I think all of us would say we'd love if they weren't on the internet but they're a little bit of a necessary evil because it's one of the few ways that these content providers can actually monetize their content. And so I think they're here to stay for a while. And then the last channel that we talk about on this is email marketing. So email marketing, this is where you send email to your, your client base. Now, there are different different types of email marketing. So there's the spam that we don't solicit that just shows up one day. And I don't think anybody really likes this. People do it because it does turn out results. It's very, very low cost to send a million emails out the door uh, as opposed to showing a million people display ads or a million people paid search traffic. And so email becomes this cost effective way to do things, but it's not technically legal just to go out and spam people. I mean, people do it all the time because it's very poorly regulated, but um, in actuality, you're supposed to have people opt in or double opt in before you send them an email. And uh, usually email marketing is, is really meant for creating a relationship and nurturing a client over time. So I come to your e-commerce store, I check out, uh, when I make that purchase, I gave you my email address for all the shipping and, and confirmation emails, but you've now added me to your customer list and you send me regular emails until I unsubscribe. Well. 
that is a very effective form of e uh, email marketing. But the problem is, is it takes time. You've got to have sales. You've got to have transactions. And so this is something that builds over time. So there are a lot of viable strategies where you can use email uh, to market to other people's lists, to promote yourself um, to your own customers. And then, of course, there's that, you know, the spamming, you know, getting the word out there. And there's a lot of gray area in there. And a lot of people try a lot of different things. But um, this is kind of a full-fledged marketing plan at scale. So if I'm running my new business and I'm selling my new product or my new service, it's pretty likely that when I get to scale, I'm running all five of these channels to my website, if not even more channels than this. And there are more channels that we don't talk about on this, on this video, but this, this right here, these five are kind of the core to digital marketing. So the next big question is, is, what kind of traffic do we need? How do we know where to focus our efforts? Organic sounded good, display sounds very scalable. We don't really know if we're not a digital marketing expert. So here's some things that I prepared to kind of help you understand the answer to that question. So each advertising channel, it's suited for a different type of traffic, a different mindset of a user and somebody who's in a different place in the funnel but each type of channel takes different money. So some of them take a lot less money and some take more money. Some of them take more time and some of them quite honestly just take more skill. Uh, to become the number one ranking organically, you've got to have a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge or be able to pay somebody who has a lot of skill and knowledge to get there. And so one large consideration when we're picking our channels for us internally is our cost versus our time. So again, if we're bootstrapping and we don't have a lot of runway before we've exhausted all of our funds, we want to be careful to do things that are very cost effective and very quickly, uh, you know, quick to an ROI. And so in order to help understand this, I've created this chart and I'm going to take those same five channels, those five circles from uh, a previous slide and I'm going to plot them on this graph. Now, you'll notice on the vertical axis, it's about return on investment. So a longer return on investment versus a quicker return on investment. And then uh, on the horizontal axis, lower cost versus higher cost. And so if we have something that's way up and to the right, that's going to be bad because it's going to be very expensive and it's going to take a long time to pay off. So that said, let's plot a few of these dots on here and let's just see how they function. So the first one is organic. That's the first one we had talked about. Now, organic typically tends to be a longer return on investment and it's a lower cost. Now, it's not typically free. Uh, there is some labor, either your, the value of your own labor or maybe you have to hire some people, but it's a much lower cost form of advertising than some of the other ones out there. Uh, but getting onto the search engine, gaining trust, gaining authority to where Google feels like you're trustworthy and relevant so you can start showing up in the searches that are valuable to you, that does take a long time. And so if you have a short runway, organic might not be the best strategy to put all your eggs in that basket. You might want to plan something else initially and then kind of build an organic strategy over time behind the scenes. The next area that we talk about is paid search. Now paid search has a very quick ROI but it is very expensive. So what I mean by that is you can go in and you can create a bunch of ads in one day and have them showing that day or the very next day. And so as soon as you're showing your ads, you now can test whether or not people are gonna purchase. And it's very possible that you create an ad, show it later that day and get your first sell in the same day. So the ROI, ROI can be very fast because again, you're showing your ad to people that are already searching for what you do because it's based on relevance. However, Google charges a premium, Bing charges a premium. Those ads on a per view basis are very, very expensive. So depending on the industry that you're in, uh, those clicks can be very, very high cost clicks. One of the driving factors that a lot of people don't know this, but uh, those ads on the top of Google and Bing, those are a bidding war. The highest bidder is who ends up on the top. Now there's some other parts of it that kind of alter that bid cost, but for all intents and purposes, it's actually a bidding war. And so if you have people fighting over the top spot for years and years, what will happen is the bids are just going up over time. So what happens is the price that you pay today is going to be a lot more than what you paid 10 years ago for that same exact ad. 
So it's a very, very expensive channel. I would, I would hate to form a business and then have my sole advertising strategy be just pay-per-click advertising on a search engine as a long-term option. I don't mind doing it for a while, but I'd much rather do some pay-per-click and then work on my organic positioning. And then as my organic ranking rises, I'm able to back off some of my paid advertising and enjoy the benefits of the organic search. The next area is something called referral traffic. So we talked about this is where a click comes from another website to our website because of some content or an article that possessed a link that came to our site. So these links or backlinks to our site, they ultimately end up ha helping our organic positioning as well. But when that traffic comes to our site, again, it's very good, honest, real intent traffic because these people are in learn mode and they want to learn about us. And so they click on our link and they end up coming to our website. Well, in this situation, referral traffic is a much lower cost than organic traffic because really it's about building a relationship with someone and getting them to be willing to write an article about you or getting them to know about you so they'll write that article and uh, gaining that link. And so that doesn't cost a lot of money, just about using your time to build a few relationships. But the return on investment can be very quick because you all, all you have to do is just get that link on their site and all of a sudden you're getting the traffic that you're looking for. So referral traffic can be a real ace in the hole if you've got a strategy for how to get listed on a lot of other websites and gain links from them back to your site. The other area we talked about is display ads. Now, here's the problem with display ads is they both take a long time to get an ROI and they're very expensive. And so this is kind of the worst combination of the two. So why would you ever do it? I mean, look at everything that's against display ads. People don't like them. Customers just don't love display ads. They cost a lot of money. You have to show a lot of ads to people before they finally react. That's why they cost. The, the actual per ad view is very cheap. It's just it could take hundreds if not thousands of ads to get one person to react because they don't naturally want to. They're not in learn mode. They're not looking for what you're offering. It's really about um, you're showing them something that was unsolicited. You're raising awareness and then they have to move through that process to decide that they want to act on it. So that's kind of a problem. And then um, the other thing is that it, it sometimes isn't shown in the venue where people are in the right mindset. So there's lots of issues with display ads. So why, why do we put it on here? Why do they still exist? Why do people spend their money? Well, the secret to display ads is they offer scale. They offer the opportunity for you to go out and show your message to people that weren't looking for it. So think about a billboard on the side of a freeway, a commercial on a television, uh, a commercial on a radio station. Those are all things that we didn't ask for and we didn't really want to listen to or see, but they affect us and they drive, that advertising drives us to make purchases as a population. Not everything's gonna resonate with all of us, but some things are going to resonate with some of us enough that advertisers still spend billions and billions of dollars on advertising. So the display ad is kind of like the billboard or TV commercial of the digital world. It provides scalability. It allows you to create demand. And then the last channel that we had mentioned was email marketing. And email marketing really is that silver bullet. It's a low cost to deploy email and it's a really quick ROI. However, you've got to remember, you shouldn't be out there just spamming people that didn't solicit the email. And most of us as founders and entrepreneurs, when we're first brand new, we don't have an email list. So my recommendation is to find somebody that does. Find somebody who's already in that industry, partner up with them, do a rev share, do something creative so you can get your email sent out to more and more people. And then be diligent that as you run all five of these channels, you're always collecting email addresses. You have a mechanism for how to automatically add an email address into your database. So that's everything about promotion and advertising. Hopefully by talking about different verticals and how we take uh, products into market and now talking about the promotion and advertising, this puts a little bit, uh, a little more, more information in your hands so you can make a good decision about your product or your service and how you're gonna go to market.